those having anniversaries this week. Hey! Happy birthdays! Happy birthday! Hey! Thank you for the birthday cards and Facebook messages and gifts uh, that were sent to me last week. It was my birthday last week, and I'm. Uh, someone said, "So you're a year older?" Nope, just a minute older than I was at 12 the night before. That's wow. pretty much how that goes. But thank you for those cards, letters, gifts, all those wonderful things. I got a dancing group. That Woo! was kind of cool. That was, that was, that was kind of neat. Uh, we did that. If you noticed out front, the fence looks better than it did yesterday. Someone decided that they didn't like our new fence. It lasted almost eight days before it got ran over. Uh, the new security cameras will be here this week, and they will be up in the parking lot because the police suggest that's a really good idea. I called the deacons yesterday. We ordered four security cameras for out there so we can get the tag number next time they do something like that. But gates will be here hopefully this week, and then we'll get the fence rebuilt. God is good. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's just a smiling wave. Keep going. It'll be all right. So, uh, and then we don't have to drive through the grooves in the parking lot, and then we'll go from there. So, we, this is Spirit Week. I want to do something a little bit different. How many have a team that you are a diehard fan? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Diehard fan. Well, I'm a diehard Ducks fan, as you know. i got Groot and the Ducks here. Uh, but born and raised in Tennessee, been out here almost six years now. And so, we have a saying in Tennessee that we bleed orange. Now, the reason we bleed orange is the truth is because we lose a lot. And so you learn to bleed a lot, right? You learn to bleed a lot. But, but a diehard fan bleeds. Would you agree? So I'm, I'm a Tennessee fan at heart, right? So, and then for my <clears throat> future daughter-in-law, where'd she go? There, she waves. She actually admits it now. That's good. I guess I'm a Portland State fan, except for this week when they lose to the Ducks. They don't have any good sports teams. Yeah, well, Portland State fans. And of course, number one right now, Nelson, the Dodgers, right? Are we still number one? Sure. Yeah, we're tied for number one right now. Any Dodgers fans? Hey, there's three of us, right? All right. And if you like archery at all, Coach, I apologize. I know you're a Matthews guy, but some of us are Hoyt fans. <laughs> Team Hoyt. Although I will eat part of the elk that was killed by the Matthews this week. So, and then finally, I guess I'm a Mariota fan. This is for you, Miss Marilyn. This was Terry's. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, die hard fans, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have die hard fans, let me ask you a question about being a die hard fan. Uh, where's me a die hard fan in here? Are you a die hard Buffalo fan? Pretty much? You know they're going to be pretty much no good, right? <laughs> pretty much. But you still have hope, right? See, you know, Tennessee's got a new coach, Oregon's got a new coach, and I find myself with Tennessee thinking, here we go again, right? But then there's this little bit of hope. And somebody said, you know, they didn't look as bad yesterday as I thought they would look. And I'm thinking, you're right, they didn't look at Maybe, just maybe, we'll win a few games. There's always hope, right? That's where being a diehard fan is. On Wednesday nights, we've been talking about worship. Today we're not going to talk about worship, but I want to talk to you about praise. I want to talk to you about praise for a little while, and then the worship team gets to lead, or the praise team gets to lead after that, and then we get to praise together. I want to talk to you about being a diehard praiser. Mm -hmm. Now, worship comes from the heart. Worship is an affair of the heart. That's just the way it is. It's an affair of the heart. You're not going to worship God without it being from your heart. Worship is one of those things that you get lost in. Worship's one of those things where you step into the presence of Almighty God and you're doing one of these, you know, you're doing a dance. You don't care who's around you. Nothing matters anymore because it's you and God. Amen. Praise can be a little different than that. Praise can be, for instance, yesterday, I jump up and I go, Woo! And to be quite honest, I don't watch much sports. I really watch the Ducks and that's about it. And I 
I have the Dodgers on my phone. But I'm screaming, interception! Yes! 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 And the ref goes, ball touched the ground. Now, I gave him praise because it was a good call. I didn't like it. I didn't like the circumstance. I didn't like the situation. I wanted the interception. But I can still give praise when something's good. Here's reality for diehard, truly born-again children of God. You've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. From the bottom of your heart, you're saved. You're filled with God. You're on your way to heaven. You can give Him praise during any circumstance. Because He's worthy. The enemy wants to steal our praise. The enemy wants to steal our praise. You know what? I should take up offerings at that. I should probably do that. Right? So let me pause for a second. Ushers, come on. I forgot. I... Ushers, come on. Boy, I just completely forgot. Wow. I'm getting into the Word and I'm getting ready to get into the Word. And... Mikey, you got a song. We'll pray and, and bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord. we got a duck pan and a deer pan, right? Uh, Did you have elk in your yard this morning? Yep, only yesterday. Yesterday. Seven of them? Last time. There was eight. I know the guy that killed the other one. Just so you know. Father, we thank you today for all you do. We pray that you bless the gift and the giver in your precious name. Bless our time together in the word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord.
And if we admit it, everybody in here has been there or is there. I want to give you just a little bit of scripture. One story, one story in scripture. Uh, I didn't even print notes. Or I just got it on my phone. The story is of Job. Probably the oldest book written is the book of Job in the Bible. And he was a wealthy man. He lived in the land of Uz, Uz, however you want to pronounce it, with a large family and extended flocks. And he was blameless and upright, Scripture says, always careful to avoid doing evil. One day Satan appears before God in heaven. God boasts to Satan about Job's goodness, but Satan argues that Job is the only good because God has blessed him abundantly. Satan challenges God that if he gives him permission to punish the man, Job will turn and curse God. God allows Satan to torment Job to test this bold claim, but he forbids Satan to take Job's life in the process. In the course of one day, Job receives four messages, each bearing separate news that his livestock, his servants, his ten children have all died due to invaders or natural catastrophes. The scripture says that Job tears his clothes, shaves his head, and in mourning, but he still blesses God. And I believe we can sum praise up with three little verses of Scripture. We know the end of that story where God gives Job back everything that was taken from him. But turn with me, if you will, to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. We're going to begin with verse 20. You don't have to stand this morning. Uh, we, we've got it on the screen. But it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle. He just heard that his children had been killed. And he shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we look that up, number, verse 22 in the contemporary English version, in all, or let me read verse 22 first. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charge God foolishly. Verse 20 in the contemporary English version, or 21, says, And he said, We bring nothing at birth. We take nothing with us at death. The Lord alone gives and takes. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I believe we could sum praise up with that one verse of Scripture. I came with nothing. When I leave here, I'll have nothing. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. What I need to learn to do is say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tim Hill tells a story of an older gentleman and they pull up in the funeral car to the graveside and as he opens the door, he gets out with his cane and as he looks up, they're burying his seventh child, his last child, and his wife is buried there. And they said as he's walking towards the grave, he stops. And he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I share with you for a few minutes this morning? I'm not going to jump on pews and sling and slobber, but can I share with you from my heart? The body of Christ is being robbed of the victories of God because our praise is being stolen. The enemy is trying with everything in him to steal our praise. He did it with Job. One of the first books ever written in the entire canon of Scripture. One verse, Job says this. It doesn't matter what comes or what goes. I came with nothing. I'll leave with nothing. And none of it's important enough for me not to praise my God. And so many times when the attack comes, he steals our joy. And he steals our victory. And he steals our praise. And I'm thinking that, you know, praise brings down walls. A shout will tear down the walls of Jericho. And I'm thinking the enemy does not want you to give praise to God. So he takes your circumstances and he tries to steal your praise with them. Believe me, I can understand that. 
This entire week, God has had this scripture in my heart, goat. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. There is nothing the end. I'm the only one that can give away my salvation. I'm the only one that can walk away from God. The enemy cannot take that from me. Amen. God is worthy of my praise. He sent his son Jesus to die on an old rugged cross for me. And when the war rages around, I want to be able to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to know that I know that I know that I'm one of those sold out that will bleed crimson. And it doesn't matter what the enemy has done. And it doesn't matter what falls apart. I'm not going to take it with me anyway, right? When I leave here, I'm going to leave the way I came with nothing. And so many times, the world sees the body of Christ defeated because of circumstances. And I wonder how many times when I allow that to happen, if I was them, if I would want what I got, if what I got ain't worth giving God praise for. Because Things haven't went the way I wanted them to. Job sums it up. He says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But I will bless the name of the Lord. I will just bless the name of the Lord. I'll bless the name of the Lord. Can I say this to you today? The enemy wants you because of circumstances you walk through that door with to not be able to praise. He wants to steal your praise from you this morning. I'm not even talking about worship. I'm not talking about getting into the presence of God, although I will say this. If you're truly praising God and you're putting your focus on Him rather than the circumstance, then worship comes. Then you begin to transition. How do we know that? Zabok and Zebok, right? Remember talking about Zabok and Zebok? It was the men on the boat in Jonah, and they didn't even know how to worship. They were heathens. They weren't Hebrews, and they didn't know how to worship. And it says they begin to offer sacrifices Zabok to God and it says it was simply a ritual. It was praise to a God that they knew was worthy of praise. But it became Zebok, righteous before God. See, if the only time I ever praise is when I feel like it, you're not going to hear me praise very often. Because I don't feel that great all the time, do you? But I got a God. He brought me out of a pit. I got to sit by some folks Friday night. Larry and Marge. I never met them before in my life. But through a simple little conversation, I got to look at them and say, you know what? I'm 22 years sober because my God brought me out. I don't need any of that mess because my God set me free. See, he's worthy of praise. I can still be that guy. And you can still be a math addict, but you're not. Because God brought you out. And you've been delivered you. And he set you free. And when the doctor says cancer, somewhere inside of us, there has to be that literally I bleed crimson and there's still a ray of hope. There's still power in the name of Jesus. There's still healing. Whether I die flat broke or well 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. can just get our focus on him and off of us. That's the kind of preaching your daddy would have liked, wouldn't it? <laughs> I know it's not popular anymore because we all want to feel good. But church, I believe God wants to pour out something in this community like he has never done before. And as long as the enemy has us whipped like little puppies hiding under a couch because it didn't go the way we wanted it to, we are never going to see the victory that God has for us. But when we begin to praise him anyway, I feel like a who and who bill, Miss Vicky. All the presents are gone, and I'm going to praise him anyway. You know what? Because he's worthy. He sent his son to die for me. He took stripes for my healing. He took a crown of thorns that I could have peace. He took everything that I might be free. And the enemy wants to wrap barbed wire around our brains. And he wants to steal our praise. He wants to steal our victory. He wants to steal our homes. He wants to steal our finances. He wants to steal it all. The Lord giveth and the Lord takes away. But I'm going to bless the name of the Lord. Do you know how much freedom that Job had to feel right there? His friends had come against him. Some say even his wife. Some say it differently. Some say his wife was hurting for him. Some say that she told him just to give up. And in the midst of it all, Job says, I'm just going to keep blessing my Lord. So here's what we're going to do this morning. And I believe I did this the way that God would have me do it. I believe we were supposed to stop and let me speak to you. I'm going to give you the opportunity to praise. Now, if you look up praise in the Old Testament, there's about seven words for praise. Each one of them means there's emotion involved. Kneeling, standing, lifting of hands. It doesn't matter to me how you praise. What matters is that you praise. That you give him the praise he deserves. Have I changed anything for you this morning? <laughs> no? Good. She sings. We're going to open these altars and you can come and dance, you can come and you can kneel at your seat, you can do whatever. But the very last song, I don't even know what it is, I didn't even look because I had one this week. What is the last song? He never lets go. If you want us to anoint you with oil and pray over you, if you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, if you need a healing in your body, if you need deliverance, if you need victory, maybe you just need to tell God you love Him anyway. Maybe you just need to say, I love you anyway. I don't like the way things are going right now, but I love you and you're worthy of praise. I don't like what the enemy's doing right now, but I love you. And I'm going to trust you. And I have hope that you're going to restore and that you're going to bind the enemy and that you're going to create victory out of chaos. Maybe, just maybe, that's the key that's holding you back from your victory. Is that the enemy's stolen your praise. Whatever your needs are, we're going to open this altar. You can come find us right now or you can come and find us. But when we close today, I want every person in this place to have the opportunity to praise their God. Come on, sis, bring your team. Father, I come to you right now and I thank you for the book of Job.
thank you for every jot, every tittle, Lord. I thank you for the Greek, the Hebrew, the Aramaic. God, I thank you that sometimes it's so simple that you give and you take away, but blessed be your name. God, I don't know what the catalyst will be to set this church on fire in worship and praise for you. But I will present every word that you have me present until you tell me to stop. Because I know that Judah was first. I know that we need, we need to be free in praise and worship. We need to move in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. And let you become everything to us. Have your way as we worship and praise you in your precious name. Amen. Stand with me if you will. Altars are open.
praise in the house. Give him praise. So I have one word, then I'm going to bless you and let you go home. Thank you, first of all, for listening. We appreciate all your attention. We love each and every one of you. Uh, for someone, and I'm not... For someone, God said, I can't take what you won't give me. As long as you hold it, I can't help you with it. That's right. So that's for someone. Father, we thank you today. Thank you so much for this church and all its wonderful people. God, we pray that you bless each one that is here. All those that are traveling, Lord, those that are uh, out somewhere for any reason, Lord, we pray that you meet their needs. Let them know that you love them in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Good day. God bless you.